Pope Francis has recently delivered a cautionary message to the global community regarding the potential repercussions of the Euphrates River drying up. This concern has led many individuals to turn to Google in search of information about this significant river, renowned for its global importance. The question arises as to why this phenomenon is occurring. According to biblical teachings, the drying up of the Euphrates River is seen as a sign of the end of the world. In a video, Pope Francis, known for consistently alerting people to future threats, warns about the possibility of the Euphrates River running dry. There is a proverbial saying that suggests when the tide rises, all houses float, implying that such an event could have worldwide repercussions. The historical significance of the Euphrates River as a natural landmark marking a crucial moment in history cannot be overlooked. The aim is to explore how current developments related to the river align with biblical events. The presentation includes research conducted to prevent unnecessary alarm. The acknowledgement of this truth dates back to Jesus Christ, who stated that only God knows when his second coming will occur, ushering in a new generation. Various predictions have been made about the timing of these events, suggesting that God's final judgment is approaching, possibly in our lifetime. Hence, it becomes crucial to be prepared. In recent weeks, numerous theories predicting the end of the world have surfaced, sparking intense discussions about prophecies in online forums and religious communities. The pervasive fear surrounding these predictions prompts a deeper exploration of the significance of the Euphrates River. Throughout the course of history, numerous civilizations have flourished along the banks of the Euphrates River. Mesopotamia, positioned between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and now in present-day Iraq, stands out as one of the most notable ancient cultures. The Euphrates River, stretching approximately 2,800 kilometers, holds the distinction of being the longest river in Western Asia. Its journey begins in Turkey, traverses Syria and Iraq, and eventually reaches the Persian Gulf. The region surrounding the Euphrates boasts a diverse flora, and significant changes have occurred in the areas along the river over thousands of years. Despite these alterations, remnants of ancient vegetation can still be found. The primary water sources for the river are rainfall and melting snow, with peak flow occurring in April and May. Babylon, an ancient city that served as the capital of the Babylonian Empire, is a well-known historical site established over 4,000 years ago on the banks of the Euphrates River. Under the rule of Hammurabi, Babylon became an influential city shaping the southwestern borders of Asia, including regions like Aram. The Treaty of Lausanne in 1923, following World War I, solidified agreements between Turkey, France, for Syria's mandate, and the United Kingdom for Iran's mandate. This treaty regulated matters such as water usage and infrastructure construction. In 1946, another agreement stipulated that Turkey would notify Iraq of any changes in the Tigris-Euphrates system's flow, granting Iraq permission to construct dams on Turkish land to manage the Euphrates flow. In the 1970s, Turkey initiated the Southeastern Anatolia project to harness the river's water for irrigation and electricity generation. The first dams constructed were Keban and Ataturk in 1975. However, a severe drought in the region significantly reduced the river's flow, leading Iraq to threaten to bomb the Ataturk Dam, causing international tensions. Eventually, Iraq and Syria reached an agreement with the intervention of Saudi Arabia and the Soviet Union. The construction of dams and irrigation systems along the Euphrates River has had a profound impact on the environment and culture of the countries along its banks. This development resulted in the destruction of approximately 400 villages and forced around 200,000 people to relocate. In recent years, the water level of the river has dangerously declined, with the amount of water flowing from Turkey to Syria now less than 200 cubic emis, less than half of what was agreed upon in 1987. Recent photographs along the Euphrates River's banks depict extensive areas where the river has dried up once thriving and essential to the livelihoods of local inhabitants. These regions have now transformed into desolate wastelands. Photographs of the second largest dam on the Euphrates River in Syria reveal a significant decline in water levels, primarily attributed to Turkey's use of the river. As 
a weapon against Syria. For years, Turkey has deliberately restricted water flow to Iraq and Syria, disregarding the 1987 agreement between Damascus and Ankara, which stipulated that Turkey should provide Syria with 500 cubic meters of water per second. Nevertheless, Turkey has been releasing a mere 200 cubic meters per second, blatantly violating the accord. The visible consequences on the ground paint a grim picture of depleted water reservoirs in Syria, leading to diminished electricity production, restricted agricultural land along the Euphrates, and a dire scarcity of portable water. Countless individuals are falling ill as a result of this predicament, prompting the independent government of northern and eastern Syria to issue a warning about the Turkish government's actions, predicting a humanitarian crisis and endangerment of the lives of the approximately 9 million Syrians residing alongside the river dam. Authorities in northern and eastern Syria have implored human rights organizations and the global community to intervene and halt Turkey's actions. Nevertheless, there is growing apprehension regarding the rapid disappearance of this ancient river, eliciting concern from geologists and rendering it challenging to identify the root cause of this pressing issue. Adding to the gravity of the situation, the United Nations has cautioned that heat waves in the Mediterranean region have exacerbated an already precarious state of affairs. Lake Assad is currently experiencing this cycle, and according to the Global Climate Danger Index, Syria is among the countries most at risk. Some individuals associate this situation with the Book of Revelation in the Bible, as there are few clear explanations for the river's depletion. The occurrence of this event aligns with the predicted happenings in the Bible, which worries many people who perceive it as the unfolding of the end of the world. Numerous individuals believe that crucial sections of the Book of Revelation indicate that Iraq will have a significant role in the end times. In chapter 16 of the Book of Revelation, the Euphrates River is mentioned, where the sixth angel pours out his bowl on the great river, causing it to dry up and pave the way for the kings from the east. This biblical verse suggests that the river's drying is a result of the contents of the bowl rather than a decline in water quality or efforts to conserve it. Instead, it appears to be the removal of a defensive barrier, allowing the kings from the east to initiate an attack. The Bible refers to the Euphrates as the Great River on five occasions, as it marked the eastern boundary of the land of Israel. Israel remained secure because crossing the river was challenging, and a desert separated them from Canaan, the promised land to the west. The Euphrates River extends for many kilometers towards Palestine before turning eastward, leading to the Persian Gulf. During the time when the Book of Revelation was written, the Euphrates River served as a dividing line between the western and eastern regions. Long ago, the kingdoms of China and India were situated to the east of a certain location. During that time, Cyrus's army of Persia successfully conquered Babylon by altering the course of the Euphrates River which flowed through the city. By drying up the riverbed, they were able to march into Babylon and achieve victory, as described in the Book of Revelations. In Revelation, it is stated that during the period of the Great Tribulation, an opponent from the east will traverse the Euphrates, pass through Babylon, and enter Palestine. God instructs the sixth angel, who possesses the trumpet, to release the four angels previously held captive at the Euphrates. As described in Exodus, John, the recipient of these messages, hears a voice emanating from the four corners of the bronze altar, directing the release of the four angels. The Euphrates River, which once served as the boundary between Israel and Assyria, is the location where these angels are confined in the book of Revelation. It is emphasized that God remains in control of all things, whether through permission or direct causation, and in the end times, evil will not go unpunished. The entities referred to as demons are identified as bound angels who have fallen from heaven and are often confined in chains of darkness. There is a belief that sin is intricately connected to the Euphrates Valley, where these four angels are held captive. It is highly probable that the first murder occurred near the Garden of Eden situated in the Euphrates Valley. Recently, there have been reports of strange voices emanating from a drying riverbed. This occurrence may serve as a means to demonstrate the safety of this path, making it easier for people to interpret current events 
as a sign of Christ's imminent return to vanquish his adversaries and establish his heavenly kingdom. Joseph Kabila, the pastor of the Watchman Ministry, recently conducted a meeting of the Watchers in Uganda. During the gathering, he urged people to remain vigilant for the impending end of the world. At the 2022 Watchers meeting, Kabila fulfilled his promise by unraveling the perplexing biblical prophecies and demonstrating that numerous predictions about the world's end have already materialized. One of the most recent fulfilled prophecies pertains to the revival of the Dead Sea, conventionally known as the saltiest sea on earth. The Dead Sea lacks marine life, plants, and animals. However, according to Ezekiel 47, God revealed to the prophet Ezekiel that the water would be cleansed, enabling the existence of living beings within it. In 2016, freshwater fish nurseries were discovered along the shores of the Dead Sea, confirming the accuracy of this prediction. Kabila also expounded on the dire battle, anticipated near the Euphrates River, as described in Ezekiel and Revelation, slated to occur in the last days. The Bible foretells that a coalition of 200 million people from various nations, including Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iran, China, and the former Soviet Union will unite against Israel. In Revelation, it is mentioned that the Euphrates River will dry up, facilitating the movement of troops during this conflict. Remarkably, the drying of the river is transpiring this year, further validating this prediction. If no action is taken, experts predict that the river will completely vanish by 2040 representing an unprecedented global loss due to the extensive damage caused by the war. The global community is anticipated to play a role in facilitating a temporary peace accord among the Waring factions. This development is perceived to align with the biblical prophecy found in Daniel, which foretells a seven-year peace covenant. According to the Bible, at the conclusion of this seven-year period, humanity will relinquish control and the return of Jesus is foreseen. The symbolic drying of the Euphrates River is seen as a significant indicator in accordance with the Book of Revelation. This drying is seen as a precursor for the arrival of the kings of the East, marking the onset of the final battle between good and evil portrayed through the seven seals and bowls of the Apocalypse. Each bowl represents a catastrophic event, drawing humanity closer to the ultimate judgment, reflecting on the spiritual and historical significance of the Euphrates River. One contemplates the interconnectedness between natural phenomena and biblical prophecies. As these events unfold, they serve as a reminder of the evolution of our world and our role within it. For those interested in exploring the relationship between the drying of the Euphrates and biblical prophecies further, please feel free to leave a comment, share your opinions, and subscribe to the channel for more engaging content. In the upcoming video, we will delve even deeper into the implications of these events and their connection to ancient history and modern beliefs. Recently, people have expressed surprise and concern at how the new information seems to align with a sense of coherence. While the Bible is the most commonly suggested explanation for the river's condition, other theories propose connections to political agendas and climate change. The question remains, are these prophecies manifesting in reality or is the river simply drying up due to climate change? Your opinions on this matter are highly valued, so please share them in the comments.